LV County Championship Second Division leaders Derbyshire had another excellent day at the expense of Essex on the first day of their match in Chelmsford, where David Wainwright completed his second successive five-wicket haul. James Foster won the toss and batted on the hottest day of the year, and he looked to his openers Tom Westley and Alviro Peterson to get runs on the board against a buoyant Derbyshire, the only side with a victory in the last round of matches. And they began this one well enough too with the wicket of Peterson in the eighth over. On nine, the South African was held in the slips by Martin Guptill off the bowling of Tim Grunewald. Wesley had been pushed up the order in place of Billy Godelman with the O.A. Shah available for the first time this season. And Wesley, who looked in terrific form in the draw match with Leicestershire last week, began brightly in spite of the loss of his partner, who fell with 20 runs on the board. It's true that the Derbyshire seamers did feed the ball onto his legs a little too often, but he played his shots with some skill. However, just as he looked well set, he went for a drive on the other side of the wicket and dragged a wide delivery from Ross Whiteley back onto his stumps to depart for 36 at 54 for two. Shah was back from the IPL, a competition he impressed enough in for some to be talking about a recall into the England 2020 side. He managed only one boundary in this innings, though. Then, on 21, he nicked a very good ball from Wainwright behind as the spinner began his first spell with an important wicket. The former Yorkshire player has been superb for his new county this summer, but he didn't immediately have it all his own way. Ben Folkes got going with a four off him. Folkes was now batting with Mark Patini, who's hit a rich vein of form of late, summed up by this shot for six off Tony Palladino just prior to lunch. This pair brought up the 100, but then Wainwright struck twice in an over, having switched ends. With his first ball again, he had Folks take it behind for 18. And three balls after that, he found some turn and bounce to have Foster caught a slip by Wes Durston for a duck to leave Essex in a bit of bother on 101 for five. That brought Greg Smith to the crease to see what he could do against his former colleagues, having left the Midlands in the close season. He began well enough with a couple of firm pull shots as he made 19 out of a sixth wicket stand of 34. But Wainwright was not to be denied, although he had to thank Dan Redfern for taking outstanding catch at short leg for the spinner's fourth wicket. Essex were now relying heavily on Patini. He patiently waited for anything short of a length from Wainwright. Patini was now key to the Essex innings. He added a further 31 runs with David Masters. Masters fell with a total on 166. A straightforward nick off Grunewald did for him after he'd made 13. But Patini coolly went to his 50 as he tried to keep the innings together. He'd worked hard for his runs which had come off 132 balls. Four fours and one maximum were included in that. Wainwright switched back to the other end again and for the third time in the day, he claimed a wicket with his first ball of a spell, taking a very good return catch off a very firm drive from Patini. He was out for 56 to give Wainwright his third five-wicket haul of an impressive season. Palladino then got in on the wicket charts in the next over by having Tymel Mills leg before for a duck. And the former Essex man then showed his expertise as a fielder to run out Charles Willoughby as Essex were dismissed for 182. Wainwright finishing with figures of 5 for 51 for the second innings in a row. Derbyshire didn't start their reply especially well. At the start of their fifth over, Masters took his 24th championship wicket of the summer by trapping Paul Borrington in front for three. But the visitors have two batsmen currently at the peak of their powers in Guptill and Wayne Madsen, and they survived the remaining 11 overs of the day to ensure that it was one which very much belonged to their side. They resume on day two with Guptill on 19 and Madsen on 15 on 37 for one, and that means they trail by 145 runs with nine wickets in hand. Although still early in the season, day two may be a pivotal one for Derbyshire, who are looking to increase their lead at the top of the second division table.